Dear Josh, this is a letter to you from me. It's an important message, so please read it carefully. Mum said journaling might help with your anxiety, and it has. Josh, this is your eighth surgery on your face, and the reality is it may not be your last. But one thing is for sure, every time you have this surgery, you lose a little bit of yourself. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll clarify. For starters, it takes almost a week for you to awaken from your anesthetic fog. You're so sensitive to those powerful drugs. You lose some of your passion, your fire, your personality. It's like you lose your love for life. The fog prevents you from remembering important things in your life, that things that you've made plans for in the future. This time, you have this letter to remind you of all the things that you want to achieve and not to go down the same path as before. The, the path that leads you back to being tired and pain, inflamed, stressed, anxious, fatigued, breathless. The same path that requires you to stay for surgery and not for success. What do you mean by success? Well, you spent all your days studying and working to help other people, that's your job, and you've been successful at that, but you've always dreamed of success on a different level, by helping humans to help themselves. You haven't done that yet, not to the degree that serves a nation of people. Josh, did I ever tell you that I believe you are more powerful than you think? This statement is more loaded than it seems for two reasons. The first reason, you overthink everything. When your illness gets the better of you, when you struggle to breathe, when you don't feel very well, you begin not to think very clearly. Instead of being sharp on point and clear with your thought, you become cloudy, indecisive, and complex. The fog slowly creeps up on you every 18 months, and it's at that time you, do, you begin to feel anxious and scared. You struggle to make a rational decision because the anxiety is set in, and even just the thought of change makes you question everything. This eventually leads to a recluse state of mind where you physically shut down, you don't feel like leaving the house, and you prefer to be alone. When this happens, you overthink everything. You are more powerful than you think when you're not overthinking. Second reason. Just hearing the word powerful reminds you of your favorite passage of writing by Marianne Williamson. The title, Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I not to be brilliant, gorgeous, handsome, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are, who are we not to be? You are a child of God. You playing small that does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. It is not just in some, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. What you do next is up to you. So why not make it worthwhile? If you're in the same place this time next year, it will be a year wasted of your talent, your abilities and skills. You may set dreams, high standards and goals. You may even fail trying to reach them. But just a reminder for you, failure is not a setback, it's a step closer to success. So with that, I give you permission to fail. Fail often and frequent. Don't let others tell you that your failures are not in vain or are in vain because I'm telling you that they're not. This is my advice to you. You need to let go of what you think and just do. Don't worry about what you think is important or what you think is valuable because what you do is more valuable. Your whole life has been primed for this moment. Just do. You know something that others do not. You can see what others cannot. For so long you felt alone, like you're in this world by yourself. But the beautiful thing is that you're not alone. There is others just like you, 
who feel, think, and see the world the same way you do. Now go find them. You've never really spoken about this in public, but you've said it a few times to people and they've agreed with you. So take confidence in that because not everyone will be ready for the message. Here's the message. Humans are not paying attention to their own body enough to understand why they are in pain, inflamed, fatigued, sick, stressed, and injured, and ill. The world wants your attention, but it doesn't want your focus. The world wants your time, but not your talent. The world wants the very best of you. It just doesn't want you to be the very best of yourself. Humans are being exposed to extraordinary amounts of advertising, toxic environments and technology that doesn't let us rest, sleep or comprehend the level of command that is controlling our conscious and subconscious minds. As humans, we've learned the art of consumption and convenience and together they are killing us. We are too tired to think and too full to feel. We have lost the language of the body, our body language. Instead, we are numb sugar zombies. As a civilization, we have moved so far away from the best version of ourselves. But I do know this. Your body, your brain, your nerves, muscles, bones, everything needs your attention and your focus. Your body wants your time and your talent. Your body needs you to listen and to speak its language. Your body wants you to be the best version of you. Why can you say these things? Because every day you treat more and more adults who have pain and cannot tell you where that pain is coming from. This may be common, but it shouldn't be acceptable. I'd expect this level of disconnect from small children or babies, but not adults. You have loved ones that remain sick while being medicated by a healthcare system that can't heal or help them until it's too late. Healthcare as we know it is doing a good job of allowing people to live an inflammatory lifestyle, a way of life that leads to illness. The healthcare we receive in the form of diagnosis, medicine, surgery just makes it possible to keep living that lifestyle. It doesn't actually do anything to change or reverse it. Humans aren't fat or overweight. We don't have an obesity epidemic. We have a disconnection, disconnection epidemic caused by a constant fuel of inflammatory fire. Our bodies are stressed and they're trying to communicate with us that something is wrong. We don't have a comorbidity problem, arthritis, asthma, back problems, cancer, COPD, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and mental health conditions. We have a problem with convenience, consumption, and the loss of native communication and connection with our bodies. We've lost our body language. Josh, you've lost your ability to understand your body's language. Find others who speak the language of the body and learn from them. Heal yourself. That is how you will achieve the change that you have been looking for.